For my latest project, I'll be using an ultrasonic distance sensor, but this time not for a robot, where it would be used to stop it bumping into walls or other objects. Instead, I want to flip that on its head, a wall which can warn people not to bump into it. So I've come up with a mind your head sign, which automatically lights up when people get too close. And in this short two-part series, I'll be sharing how I made it. At its heart is a Raspberry Pi Pico, an inexpensive microcontroller board, onto which I've already installed MicroPython, which will run the software. The installation of this is easy, but can be slightly baffling. So if you are brand new to the Pico, check out the video linked above. Next up, our ultrasonic sensor. Also pretty cheap, but I've spent a bit extra for the three volt version. This sends out a high frequency signal, which when it bounces off an object, returns an echo, and it's the time that takes which will tell us our distance. The sensor has four pins, VCC and ground to give it power, and then trigger and echo to do the measuring. These we can plug into our breadboard, where they can connect to the Pico with some jumper cables, red for the power, plugging directly to the 3.3 volt output, fifth pin in from the right. And because the sensor and the Pico both use the same voltage, we don't have to mess about with voltage dividers, which, simple as they are, would add an extra step. The black negative can plug into any of the ground pins, the ones with the square pads. I happen to pick the one next door. Then it's the wire to send out our signal, the trigger and we can connect that to pretty much any of the GPIO pins, which slightly confusingly have different numbers to the physical pins, and the ones printed on the breadboard. Then finally, we need to wire up the echo. This is going to send the signal back from the sensor, as an input into the Pico, and again could use any of the GPIO pins. But to keep things tidy, I'm going to use the one next door. Then we need our warning light, and for now I'm just using a standard LED, while we sort out the programming. This we can plug into two columns on the board that aren't being used for anything else, just remembering which one was for the long leg. This is the anode and we'll be connecting that to another one of the pins, this time using a resistor so we can control the current. Again we'll be using the pin as an output, supplying 3.3 volts to our LED when triggered. Once again it doesn't matter which pin we use, I've just chosen the closest one. Then to complete the circuit, a cable from the cathode to any one of those square ground pins on the Pico, which are conveniently spaced out so we'll find one nearby. And that's our wiring done. We've got all four pins of the sensor connected to our Pico, red and black for the power, yellow and blue to send and receive the signal, which will light up our LED if anything gets too close. Now we need to plug the Pico into another computer so we can program it to work out how far away things are and when they're too close. For the code itself, I thought I'd try out something a little different, and rather than painstakingly research it for myself, I thought I'd get ChatGPT to write it for me, and giving it all the information I think it's going to need, see what it comes up with. Now I know this is no more cheating than looking it up in a book, but I remain irrationally suspicious of AI, perhaps because it feels a little bit too easy, and as my real-time screen recording shows, it comes back with a solution really quickly. Of course, it's only one of several ways to skin this particular cat, and indeed, exactly the same wording returned a range of answers, and I chose the one which, with my limited knowledge of coding, I best knew what was going on. So with a simple click of the copy button, I've got my code pretty much ready to use. And to get it onto the Pico, we're going to need something like Thony, into which we can paste the copied code, which appears where we'd normally type if we were writing our program from scratch. To get it to work, we're going to need to make some minor adjustments. Our sensor is plugged into different pins, so we're going to have to change the numbers. And note it's the GPIO pin number we're using, not the one for the physical pin. I mostly understand what's going on in the program, although there are a few things I might have done differently, or left out altogether. But we are getting exactly what we were promised, and when I put my hand closer, the new measurement appears in the shell below the program. At the moment, that's all it does. It doesn't yet light up our warning LED. But we didn't ask ChatGPT to include that, so we're going to have to add that ourselves. But first, let's stop the program and save what we've got so far. Clicking the Save button gives us two options. We want to put it on the Pico, giving it a suitable name, version number if we want, and .py at the end. Then hitting Return, our program appears in the file listing on the left. Now let's get our warning light working by adding in some extra lines of code, and I'm going to follow the structure that ChatGPT gave us, first setting up the pin for the LED, using a similar name. Then I want to do the same for the next bit, adding a similar line to trig and echo. 
I'm going to call this warning and pretty much copy the above lines, but using LED underscore pin. And as that's an output, like the trigger, we want that to be pin dot out, not forgetting to close the parenthesis at the end. Now, I'm not sure if I would have structured it exactly like that. I think I would have put the pin numbers in this bit, rather than setting them up first. But that's really just a style thing, and both equally valid. Likewise, when we come to this bit, we could probably write it in half a dozen ways. But when it comes to the code for my LED, I'm going to follow its lead, and use a similar kind of technique. And leaving the existing if and else where they are, introduce another loop in between them. At this point, we know that dist is not none. But let's get our program to check and see if it's less than 5. And if it is, activate our LED with a value of 1. And if it isn't, leave our LED off, as there's nothing perilously close to our sensor. Now I could get rid of that print instruction, as it really isn't needed now we've got a warning light. But it will be useful when testing, so I'm going to leave it in place for now, along with the error message that shows a 40 reading. So when we run the code, we still get the distance in the shell. And if that drops below 5 centimeters, our LED lights up, going out again when we're at a safe distance. Obviously, we're going to need to optimize those values for our real life situation, but we've got a working prototype. So, next, let's look at the sign. Our solitary LED was okay for testing, but we're going to need something a bit more impactful to stop people actually bumping their heads. So, I've got myself some flat panel LED modules, the kind that are used behind text displays as a backlight. Having a sneaky peek under the white film, we can see a single LED embedded into the side of a slab of clear acrylic, which diffuses the light. One side is printed with white dots, designed to act as a reflector, and even though they look the same from the outside, there is a front and a back, so we'll need to get them the right way round. Like regular LEDs, we've got two legs, a long one and a short one. Obviously, we can't just stick these into the breadboard, so I've got some male-female jumper cables, and I'm very carefully pushing these onto the ends of the legs. White on the anode, black on the cathode. My sockets were a pretty tight fit, and I had to be extra careful not to bend the spindly legs, but eventually I got them on. At the other end, we're simply going to replace the LED that we had, plugging in the wires from the panel to the same holes on the breadboard. Everything else can stay the same, although I may tweak my slightly arbitrary choice of resistance later on to optimise the brightness. Then it's back in with the USB cable to reconnect to the host computer, and try it out by running the code, measuring those distances, and when anything comes too close, triggering the light. Now that's much more impactful than our single LED, and we've got space for a short warning message, but not quite enough for a full mind your head. So I'm going to rig up a second panel, wired in exactly the same way as the first, the two arranged end to end, to make a nice long rectangle, plenty of room for all our words, and to make sure they're both nice and bright, I'm running them in parallel pushing the wires into the same columns on the breadboard as the first, both anodes connecting to pin 16 via the resistor, the cathodes to the ground via the black wire. Then making sure we've got them both the right way up, we can give them a test. And even in my reasonably well lit room, they're plenty bright enough for the sign. In part two, I'll look at tweaking the resistance to get them even brighter and share how I made the sign itself, a 3D printed sandwich of clear and black filament. I'll pop a link in as soon as that's ready. But even now we've got a fully operational backlight, triggered when something comes too close to our sensor. We now need to move on from the experimental phase and get it working in a real life environment. So it's back into the code to make some tweaks. I never really liked this bit that ChatGPT gave us. So while we're here, I want to simplify that, putting the pin numbers directly in these lines, rather than what for me seems a rather pointless stage of setting them up as words in the first place. Then we need to look at the bit we did right, and obviously at 5 centimeters, you're already far too close to the sensor. So as well as spacing that out a bit more elegantly, I'm going to increase that to about a foot. Also, checking only once a second is quite slow. We want our warning to be a bit quicker than that to react. So I've set the sleep time to be 50 milliseconds between each reading. That's actually probably a bit quick, but our distance is about right. And an off-camera wave of my hand triggers the sign with plenty of time for me to take evasive action. Now we've got one final task, at least for this part of the project. Our Pico powered sign isn't much use if it has to be connected to the host computer to start the program, but by saving a copy as main.py, the Pico knows to run this automatically as soon as it's powered up, ignoring anything else, so we can keep any work in progress files should we want to come up with a version 2 later on. 
Then, along with a bit of a preview of how the project develops in part 2, with a 3D printed case that eventually all the gubbins will go inside, we can power it up independently, automatically starting our code, continuously measuring when things get too close. And that's where we'll be leaving it for part 1, a fully operational sensor with warning light, just waiting for a bit of packaging and some extra bells and whistles, which we'll cover in part 2.